Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. And I'm back. Yeah, it's been a while, but I'm back. It has, yeah. Welcome back into yeah, the thanks, set, mate. It's good to have you again. <laughs> right, so this week we've got some smart rollers. We've got some bling shoes, which you're very excited mm. about. You were drooling earlier on. Plus, we've got some new bikes from Decathlon too. Yeah, we've got your upgrades, the Bike Vault, and plenty more. Exactly. So let's get on with the show. First up, it's great news for all of you who love indoor training on the rollers because Elite have released their new Nero Smart Rollers. Yeah, now firstly, and probably most importantly in this era, is the ability to connect them via ANT Plus or Bluetooth, and then you can use software such as Swift, Sufferfest, MyE Training, anything like that. And then the actual resistance within the unit of the rollers adjusts accordingly to the gradient or the course or anything like that which you are riding or undertaking. And even get this, the uh, gradient, so if you're riding uphill, can actually be adjusted of up to 7%. Wow. So, you know, obviously the rollers awesome. aren't, aren't moving off mm. of the ground or anything like that, but the resistance is done accordingly. And I think that's super. Yeah, and then there's the uh, addition of that more realistic feel, which comes from that flywheel, which is in both of the rear rollers. And with the momentum that it carries, will make it more realistic and more road feel, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, rollers for me have always been the closest thing to riding on the yeah. road. But you can't freewheel for very long, can no. you, on a pair of rollers? Because you fall, fall off. Fall off. Uh, but, I mean, sticking with that realistic feel, they've actually taken that floating mechanism that they have in uh, some of their older rollers and incorporated that. So, for those of you who are new to rollers, for instance, well, they find it a little bit of a struggle sometimes, don't they, mm. to actually get going and everything like that, and the, the jerky feeling that you can get if your pedaling isn't quite smooth. So, by having that floating platform on top, I mean, that's super, isn't it? Yeah, and with the addition to that, it makes it easier for those experienced roller riders like myself. And it, me. <laughs> yeah. I, I live on rollers. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it helps you get out the saddle and it yeah. also makes it a lot more comfortable when riding out the saddle. Yeah, it's great that. And not forgetting, they also fold up, which is pretty useful. Yeah, especially if you're short of space. Mm. Do you remember when we used to go to the track in Newport in Wales? I do. And it was always a struggle, wasn't it? Going, like you take your rollers with you always to warm up in yeah. between races or sessions. And it was always a nightmare trying to get through those doors, carrying yeah, the rollers and the bikes. And those bags. circular doors, mate, when you got like <laughs> non, non fold up <laughs> rollers, you end up hard get stuck halfway yeah it's a nightmare so the addition to the fold up ones is going to be well much used i think yeah yeah, yeah. i'm still chuckling about those times oh, gosh. why do we always try and carry everything at once yeah i had them on my shoulders just do two journeys bike, three journeys and then two wheels disc oh yeah, yeah. oh well british brand hunt have just released a new pair of wheels the 35 carbon gravel x disc wide i think i've got that around the right way uh which are designed for the ever increasingly popular discipline of gravel riding so the depth 35 millimeters external width 30 millimeters and an internal rim width of 23 millimeters oh wow sounds interesting and yep. they are designed to use tires of around 35 millimeters but hunt have said that the optimal tire is around 40 millimeters width which is a pretty sizable tire that it is yeah and also interestingly i reckon too is that there's even a minimum uh width tire recommended which is 28 millimeters really? obviously you go in and think narrower than 28 millimeters on you gravel or go. cyclocross yeah. it's gonna be a little bit sketchy now. yeah don't yeah. do that now oh interestingly as well about this a lot of interesting things oh yeah uh whilst on my flight over to australia oh, okay, for yeah. the tour down under oh, i've heard about this more than yeah once. yeah business class Biz did you actually go business class, mate? Uh, John was in business class, I was in economy. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah, whilst on the way, they actually bumped into a couple of the guys from Hunt and they were telling me about great projects they've got upcoming. So, I suggest everyone keep their eyes peeled for that. Yeah, because, super well, exciting stuff yeah. coming in the near yeah, future. Yeah, it's a young brand, but there's a lot of potential there, isn't there? Yeah. This week, we are celebrating unbreakable tech. Of course, we do love cutting edge, super aero, super lightweight stuff, but well, there's a certain part of my heart which is still there for that stuff that seemingly goes on forever. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of those sustainable designs as well. And actually, we've compiled a list of our favorites, and this is the kind of tech you will want when the inevitable happens. What's that then? The zombie apocalypse! Shake. What is wrong with him? Sorry, got carried away. <laughs> yeah, shaking. Right, first up, top of the list, we have got an entry from our very own John Travolta. Who? 
John Travolta. Oh, Chris Opie. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, right. Yeah, and he comes in with that amazing world's best pedal. That's his words. Yeah, his, his words, words, not mine. The yeah. Shimano SPDR. Oh yeah, they were yeah. they were like indestructible. They, they were indestructible, and they had such a tight clip in and out. They yeah. were just incredible. Yeah, all the track sprinters were using mm. those. In fact, I remember uh, one of the riders multi-Olympic champion, Chris Hoy, his dad used to actually fabricate, uh, <laughs> he used to actually fabricate some little clips on the underside of them, so then he could also further just make sure his foot stayed in place with a toe strap. How cool is that? That is pretty cool, yeah. but they were putting so much power in that. I think they needed just something so tight that absolutely no chance was their foot gonna come out. Yeah. But still, they were discontinued because I guess, well, if they're going to go on forever and ever and ever, they're never going to sell any more different mm. pedals, are you? Next up is tied and soldered spokes. Not mm. commonly seen anymore. I never used them. Did you not? Never no. on a track bike? No. Right, okay. So, uh, basically, it was where you tied and soldered spokes together using some lead solder melted in place. Now, loads of people out there, they actually thought that it was going to make a wheel really super stiff and everything. But in actual fact, it just relieved the stress of the J head of a traditional spoke where it goes into the hub shell, meaning there was less chance of it breaking there. So, inevitably, giving it a longer life, I guess. Yeah, sounds bomb. Proof. Yeah, loads of sprinters used to use them too. Mm. Some funny, isn't it, that so far the first two things both used by track sprinters. Yeah, they well they give the bike the hardest. Most abuse. Yeah, most abuse really, yeah. And then there is alloy bars. Oh. Alloy bars that yeah would survive any big crash or big tumble and actually are used by some of the riders in the pro peloton to this day. Yeah, and the reason they do that as well is actually get the bikes up to the minimum weight limit of 6.8 kilos. But yeah, alloy bars are still favoured by loads of people. Yeah, they're just rigid, aren't they? And yeah. if they do crash, they you know bend or they can be bent back into yeah. position and slide and snow brainer. Right, here's one then. Single speed bikes. Oh, I do love a single speed. Yeah, I mean, they are so simple, aren't they, really? Obviously, because you've only got one gear on them. They're used by bike messengers in New York, London, and, well, other cities worldwide. Um, they uh, just... Hang on a minute. You're forgetting that I used it in Red Hook. Have you done a Red Hook grip? Yeah, I did Red Hook in Milan. Great event. Really good. Went down through the All right, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, so these bikes, they've got very few parts on them, as I've already mentioned. They use square taper bottom brackets very often, a bigger chain as mm. well. Yeah, they just seem to go on and on and on, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I just don't think there's many things to go wrong on that no. single speed. So. When you go to a track league, there's always people there on a bike which is like 30 years old. Yeah, I You think don't it's go fantastic. to a road race and see someone that. on a bike 30 years old, do you? No, I love it. Just that. go on and on and mm. on. Right. Just like me about Red Hook, I guess. <laughs> right, John, you yeah. ready for this one? I am, gone. Solid rubber tyres. Oh, yeah. Yeah, never puncture. No. But then again, I guess the rolling resistance isn't that great. And I, it feels like you're kind of riding through, I don't know, custard. Yeah, you're right there. I mean, I... But then they are puncture resistant, yeah, and that's a are. big yeah. deal. Yeah, they are. You know, they're unbeatable, aren't they, in that respect? They are indestructible. Yeah. They're very, they are the very meaning of the word. Of course, we're not ever going to see a track rider using those. And I say a track rider because it does seem that a track cyclist, with all those components we've mentioned so far, mm. they are what a track cyclist uses, or a track sprinter specifically, you know, especially when they're training. So I wonder if a track sprinter is the ultimate test dummy yeah, for they, parts. That makes so much sense because they are big, they are powerful, and they put so much force through that bike that they have to be just so strong yeah. and rigid. They crash a lot as well, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. You weren't a track sprinter though. But anyway, I think- <laughs> I did crash a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I know where you go with that. Yeah, yeah cheers. Sorry yeah. that one. Right, but let us know what parts you think are unbreakable or unbeatable mm. down there in the comment section. Yeah, below. let us know what we missed out yeah. because, yeah, we sure would like to know. Yeah. Now, we've got some winners to announce from last week's ASOS S9 mm. Bib Shorts unboxing that Oliver Bridgewood did, and well, with no further ado, here are the winners. First up, we've got Tony Kelt. From Great Britain. We've got Timu Kipanian. From Finland. Ryan Ward. Australia. Tarkus Frost. Great Britain. And Hajo Precht. Germany. Congratulations, and well, we've been in touch very shortly yes, to arrange the will. delivery and also confirm your sizing. 
Sports supermarket Decathlon have announced that they're rebranding their impressive B-twin range to the very Flemish sounding Van Heisel. Yeah, I do like your pronunciation oh, there thanks, as well. Thanks, mate. You've been working on it. Now, no, Reisel is, uh, or Reisel, however you want to say it, is actually the Flemish word for Lil, which is actually where the Cathlon's range of bikes are both designed and assembled in house, although it's spelt slightly differently. but. Mm. Well, it's still a cool little story, that, isn't it? Now, they are actually going to have 12 different variations of bikes in their top-of-the-range offering uh, based on two different carbon frame sets. You're going to have a top-of-the-range, a Campagnolo Super Record equipped bike with Campagnolo Boras. That looks super so cool, nice. doesn't it? As well as bikes with Ortega Di2, you've got Shimano Dura Ace, you've got women-specific designs. And if anything we reckon we can take from this is that it's going to be super value for money because in the past, that's exactly what they've been, mm. isn't it? 100%. But wait, look oh. at this. This is the new bling pair of oh. shoes that Decathlon have come out with. Wow. At just 109 99 Those are cool, aren't they? You can look at yourself in the mirror with that all day, can you? Mate, look at You want that. a pair, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. Dancing shoes. Now, James, did you know that I'm obsessed with GPS makes? Yeah, I did, mate. Yeah. By the look of your desk, you've got them all scattered <laughs> over your keyboard. Yeah, yeah. I am pretty, pretty uh, outrageous with them, and I even made my own once, it was absolutely rubbish. But check this one out, right, from Carbon Works. Oh, so, wow. uh, you actually attach it to the faceplate of your stem, so you have to have a stem which accommodates bolts that you can basically attach to from the rear because they've got hollowed out titanium bolts that then this little grub screw goes in and then joins it there. Oh, how cool is that? You can also adjust the angle. That is pretty nifty. Yeah, so I can put my wahoo on that. Right in the center of the bars. I hate off-center yeah. GPS. I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty impressed with that job. Yeah, 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 and you can't have it, mate. Sorry. Oh. Right, more tech next week. Right, it's that part of the show which you've been really looking forward to, isn't it? What yeah. part of the show is it? It's screw riding upgrades by upgrades. That's right, yeah. So we want to see the upgrades that you've done for your bike. So if you've done anything, make sure that you use the uploader tool down there in the description below. And well, you maybe could win one of these very fancy workshop aprons. As yeah. you can see, I've been well, getting nice and grubby actually in this. You're rocking so, it, John. I am, don't look bad, do I? No. Looks all right. Right, anyway, so we need to actually announce then the winner of last week. And it was with 54% of the votes, so pretty close at four out, Antonio and that Vitus. So get in touch with us on Facebook. Yeah, well to done to you, Antonio. The delivery. Everyone's a winner though here, aren't they? Yes, they are. Right, okay. This week, first up is William from Boston. Now, Oliver, he likes to do accents, things like that, but I don't like to do that. No. You don't like to do that. No. Okay, right, first up is William from Boston. <laughs> Apparently, the bike building project started merely because <laughs> William needed to travel to their internship location without sitting in the metro for 40 minutes. Fair. With a visit to the local bike shop, William purchased a 1986 vintage Cannondale SR400 road bike and wanted to customize it. it. William repainted the bike in matte black with 3D printed nylon cable oh, guides to replace the beautiful. damaged old ones. The group set was upgraded to Shimano 600 Tricolor to improve the efficiency. efficiency. The friction shifters were upgraded to index shifters for quicker and more precise shifting. shifting. Uh, the saddle is Cell SMP for the comfort and the front fork was upgraded to an EMS carbon fork for great looks and lightweight reduction. reduction. Everything other than the frame stem and seat posts are upgraded. That's oh. before. That's before. That's oh. oh! William from Boston. I like that. Yeah. I'm a fan. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it looks racy. Yeah. Uh, like the saddle. I, I, people love or hate those saddles, don't they? It looks a bit weird. It looks like a witch's nose. Yeah, I've, but, or mine. Uh, I've <laughs> never actually used one, but yeah. Big old transformation, that William, and I do like those Cannondales. No, fair play Ooh. to you, William. That's cool. All right then, who's William up against this week then? William's up against Alessandro from Italy. Ooh. Alessandro was looking for a nice commuter for everyday use to let his racing machine rest ready for the weekend. He saw an advertisement for an old bike, a 1973 Mercia made with Reynolds 53-1 buttered tubes. It was dusty, it was dirty, and with obvious signs of wear on the original cables and tires. Alessandro rode it for a couple of weeks until the first puncture. Should have had solid tires. Yeah. Then Alessandro opted for a total revolution. Upgraded tires to challenge Roubaix 27mm open tubulars. Nice. Upgraded plastic 
ish simplex criterium derailleur and shifters with aluminium simplex SL J550s. Brooks C17 oh. along with the red Brooks leather handlebar tape, chrome pump, double bottle rack on the bar, saddlebag, new cables and pads, and to complete this amazing product project, he a generous hand of grease and polish all around the frame. The result well, his words, was spectacular and it radiates from under the sun. Oh, look at it. It's amazing what a pair of gun wall tires can do to a bike, isn't it? Oh, I'm it so really flat. Is. Who are you gonna go for? The Cannondale or the Mercia? No, mate, it's gotta be Mercia for me. Well, right, Alessandro from Italy, right. Well, I'm actually yeah. gonna go for William. Yeah, I like that Cannondale, something about it. The Mercia, don't get me wrong. Anyway, we, we don't decide oh, this, do we? There's so much history, it's beautiful. Love oh, yeah. So, Anyway, how do they get to vote? Hello. Right, vote up there in the poll. Yeah, William or Alessandro? Yeah. Cannondale or the Mercia? John or James? Right, bike of the week time now. And well, announce last week's results. Well, last week it was a very convincing win for the young pocket rocket, Caleb Ewan. Yeah, that's right, so 61% of the votes. I mean, 61%? Yeah, so that's his second victory, I think, this year. Of course, he did have one taken away from him with, yeah. with Argy Bargy in the sprint. But anyway, this week then, let's put head-to-head -head the Bianchi Ultra XR4 of Team Jumbo Visma. Nice. So, Bianchi frame, we've got a Shimano Dual Race DI2 group set, Shimano wheels, we've got Physique saddle, and also uh, we've got some Vision finishing kit on the handlebars. Mm, and I that, like that. And that's up against the Argon 18 Gallium Pro of the Astana team, I think that's a great looking bike actually. Yeah. Uh, Durace Di2, again we've got Corima wheels, which is a slightly unusual choice. Wolfpack tyres, that's right, Wolfpack. Yeah. Uh, and we've got Prologo saddles, and also we've got FSA finishing kits on there too. Who's I, it gonna be? I think it's gonna be that Bianchi, because of the gorgeous colour. Do you know what I mean? It's okay, just Okay, right, so you know up. where to go. You've got to vote up there, top corner. And uh, yeah, you decide. He likes the Celeste colour, don't you? Oh, Celeste. Beautiful. Yeah. Celeste. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice bike. Yeah, really nice bike. Mm. Right, it's now time for the Bike Vault, the moment of the show where we rate your bike. Either nice or super nice. And of course, if you want your bike to go into the bike vault amongst the thousands of submissions we get, well, you've got to upload it using the uploader tool down there in the description. Include information about you, your bike, where you come from, all those bits and pieces. And maybe, just maybe, you'll make it in here. Yes, right, and what will. happens, James, if someone gets a super nice? Well, they get a ring of yeah. the bell. Yeah, they get a ring of that bell, don't they? The blasted bell, it's back. <laughs> right, okay. The first one then this week comes in from Peter from Leuven in Belgium, and this is Peter's standard Treebwork Mac 3 frame set uh, with a SRAM Ridge group set, Chris King hubs, Ooh. H plus sun rims, naughty, and well, the weight of it 7.75 kilos minus the pedals, which is pretty good going, isn't it? That's a not that. I really like the colour of that bike. He's got a quiet power meter on that as well. Yeah, he has, yeah. Wow, beautiful. I'm going to go super nice, 100%. Look at that, straight in with the super nice. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's got to be. Super nice, yeah, beautiful. So, are you going to do it? Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Right, who's next on the agenda? Right, we've got Charlie from London. Oh. Uh, hey, that specialised LA Sagan edition, oh. zip 808 and 404, Altegra R8000. That's a nice looking bike. Isn't it's a it? beautiful bike, but I would say that that background just doesn't make the cut. Yeah, is that a table tennis table I folded think, up? I think, I think Keller, I think Keller is, yeah. yeah. I like a bit of table tennis, actually. So, um, I mean, on that account, uh, I yeah, just think that background just lets it yeah. down. Yeah, you're right there, yeah. And also, your tyre logos also need to match up with your valves, don't they? Things I mean, like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, it's the little details that we yeah. need to It's a nice bike though, Charlie. Nice submission there, buddy. Right, next up is Daniel from Christchurch in New Zealand. A Ridley Fenix disc. Uh, Reynolds Assault SLG wheels. Mm. Integra R8070 DI2. And a Deader finishing kit. It's a nice bike, that. Nice uh, backdrop as well. Yeah, I'm going to say that. It's a, it is a nice bike. Yeah. Uh, the big bike. I just prefer just the smaller bikes with a slam stem, but that's just- he can't my... help his size. <laughs> that's just, that's just my opinion. Oh that's right, okay. So, I mean, per, I think it's a super nice, but what do you think? Okay, well, uh, nah, no, I'm not gonna say super nice, so I'm sorry. Okay, nice bike. <laughs> You're really harsh, aren't you? I'll tell you what, the viewers, they won't want you back in here for the bike vault. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, Next up is on. 
Jack from the Basque Country. Oh, I love it. Yeah. An absolutely stunning beautiful, part of the world. Beautiful, beautiful. Right, what's Jack got? Trek Imonda SLR with the new Shimano 105, oh. Sele Italia saddle, physique bars, Bontrega stem and wheels. And Pirelli start in Pirelli size. Yeah, don't see many Pirelli tires. And look, notice small bike, long stemmed, slammed. Beaut. Right, okay, well, I think I know where you're going. That's a nice place, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Oh, background. look at it. Look at that. Yeah, look at the He's quite high up. Yeah, I bet that's a well, quite a brutal climb getting up there. If anything's yeah, going on, whenever I've been out there, yes. But that's I'm going to give this straight away. Come in, come in hot with a super nice. Yeah, super nice yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, I think it looks really Fair good. On. Um, you know what to do when you get super. Oh, yeah, thank you. Right. Okay, uh, final one this week is Charles from Somerset West. Not the one in the uh, no, UK. It's South Africa. That's right. So it was a 2015 Bianchi uh, oh. Infinito CV Campagnolo Bora 150 wheels fitted with specialised turbo cotton rubber, dead of Super Zero bars, and a Thompson stem. An unusual choice there using Thompson. Also, a yeah, it's a yeah, definitely a Thompson stem actually. Mm. Definitely. Oh, it's a nice looking bike. Then I yeah, do like the colour of that. Bit. I was going to say it's not in the uh, traditional Celeste, which I'm a bit. Oh no, it's not. I've just noticed that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, although they've gone obviously for the uh, Celeste bar tape, and there's a yes. couple of little bits. You've got to have some Celeste. Yeah, I mean for me that is super nice all yeah. day long. Hundred percent. Yeah, super nice. We need to give you a bit of training on the old bell ringing technique. But, Sorry, but I reckon you're good. I'm getting you, there. There's potential there. I didn't like it at first. I still don't. <laughs> right. So remember to submit your submissions for the bike vault down there using the uploader tool. Right there we are. Nearly time for the I end know, of the show. It's a sad time, but yeah. don't forget if you did like this video, then make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Yeah, and also share it with your mates too. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so and click that little bell notification. How does that sound? Something like that, and you get a notification each and every time we put a video up so you don't miss a thing. And also, if you want to look like us, yes. a couple of legends here right now, well, head on over to the shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Whole yep. heap of goodies to check out. There is indeed. And well, what video? I, do you know what, actually? They should check out when I went to go and meet our mate Rob Hales in his carbon fibre shed. I have to say, shed. fantastic video. Thank you. And uh, something that I really didn't really expect coming out of that garage. Yeah, so click just down here to view that.